Good afternoon from the Kuma House, C-O-O-M-A, Kuma House. Now, I don't know what the Kuma House is all about, but I needed a break on a Sunday drive, and I thought I would come along and just take a peek. It was just off the, just off the highway on my way to Yass, Y-A-A-S or Y-A-S-S, something like that. But this is the, uh, this is the Kuma House, and I thought, why not just take a, just a, a real quick moment and do a little tour of this. Welcome to the Kuma Cottage, I should say. Uh, Kuma Cottage, grounds and home of the explorer Hamilton Hume. So we're going to just stop here and just take a real quick, uh, real quick, quick break, I should say, and just share some of this with you. It's a beautiful, beautiful autumn day, and I'm about halfway between Sydney and uh, I'm about halfway from Sydney to to Melbourne. So this is, uh, they give you some information, the human hovel walking track. I'm not going to, I'm not going to read it all, but uh, it, the walking track is one of the most significant recreational projects to be undertaken by the Department of Lands. The track from Kuma Cottage to the hovel tree on the banks of the Murray River at Albury is some 440 kilometers long. And interestingly enough, that's where I'm going to be staying tonight. I'm going to be staying in, in Albury. So we are uh, right up here, and there is the there's the walking track all the way over to to Albury, and here's some information about Hamilton Hume and William Hitton Hobo, two gentlemen there. New South Wales in 1824, the Hume and Hobo expedition, and highlights of the journey. I give you some information about the uh, highlights of the highlights of the journey here. So let's go and just look at the beautiful countryside. I've heard that Australia, the Australian countryside, is just beautiful, and no question, I see some horses out there grazing. All right, let's go check out the uh, check out the cottage. I don't know if this is the, uh, I don't believe that this would be the cottage. I would like to think this is probably the, the stable, if I'm not mistaken. I see horseshoes, or looks like to be horseshoes, but this is probably the, probably the stable. And what a beautiful place. Look at this. Every time I do a walk and talk like this, I find myself thinking of my good friend Carlo, who was telling me that uh, I have seen more of Australia than a lot of Australians. Very, very nice. Boy, this is pretty. What beautiful countryside. Having paid my $10 entry fee, which I think uh, converts to about six US dollars, I uh, was told that this is the cottage. So we're gonna walk in, there's a, a, a gift shop, and they can give you a guided tour as well. I'm gonna forego the, the guided tour, and I'm just gonna do a, uh, do a walk and talk and bring you along through the, through the cottage. And I see a sign here that says, warning, snakes when in season. All right, so I don't know, I don't know when snake season is. This could be snake season, but you come in here, you've got information. Hamilton Hume, our great, great explorer. There would be the fireplace. All types of stuff that you can, you can buy. Look at this. And then here they've got native bees of New South Wales. If you're into, if you're into bees. And they have all types of stuff that you can buy. There's kuma cottage, apricot jam, and boy, this all looks good, doesn't it? Tomato relish, zucchini relish. There's your pot scour. The kitchen. Originally, the kitchen design included a stew pan to the left on the open hearth stove and a bread oven. The stew pan was later demolished and a doorway into a room on the other side of the fireplace was created. 
The doorway was blocked up by the trust to return this past part of the house to its earlier configuration. The stew pan has been has not been reconstructed as the original design is not known, although on the left-hand side of the fireplace can be seen the remains of its flue, which lead into the central chimney. There, so there you have, look at that. The hog pot. This will take us into this room here. Here's a model of the home. I think I actually look right over the top. There's your your modded your model of the cottage. Looks more like a villa to me. Here is a fireplace right there. Very nice. A lot of different books that you can buy. M is for Mutiny, History of the Alphabet, Explorer's Atlas. So apparently he was quite the, uh, apparently he was quite the explorer. Now look at this beautiful scene right here. Boy, what a nice place. It's one of these little places that you step into or stumble upon, I should say, as you're traveling out and about. This would have been the this would have been the garden. Wonderful. And somewhere out here would be a a tour guide, I, I'm assuming. Somebody working in the working in the garden here. What a beautiful scene. It's a nice view of the back of the cottage. Can I go in there? Okay. All right. Let's see if we can go into the back. I found my way inside the house and I'll just do a quick uh, quick walk and talk for you through the inside. Look at this. There's a small small table to play chess right by the fire. That's probably where my dad and I would have been sitting playing some chess. Maybe this gentleman played chess as well. Very, very nice. The wallpaper, freezing ceiling paper in this room have been reproduced from fragments that were found on the walls and ceiling. Look at this. There's the, you can see the floors. This is owned by the National Trust of Australia. Just kind of wandering my way through. I pretty much have the, the home to myself. Look at this. Boy, it's like stepping back in time. It really is like stepping back in time. Here's some pure soap. Since 1884. Might have done a little bit of panning. These would be the pantries, I'm, I'm assuming. We're at a different place in time. There's a nice portrait. All right.
Everyday life on a colonial homestead, the small three-bedroom weatherboard cottage purchased from the O'Briens was deemed unsuitable for the life of a grazier and pastoralist. Although they were relatively wealthy from the grants accumulated in Hume's exploring days, life on the land was hard, and the isolated property needed to be self-sufficient. Very nice. There's a lot of information. The bitter fight about who led the 1824 expedition to Port Phillip. There's some information on the people here. Very nice. Somewhere in here should be the kitchen. I think this is a, a bedroom here. The function of this extraordinary room is unknown. The fact that the room could be locked from the inside together with the heavy floral wallpaper suggests some sort of feminine retreat from the activities of the house. The darker patches are remnants of the original 1840 wallpaper, which had been left in position. So there you would see the, the darker patches right there. So this was kind of like the equivalent of a, of a man cave, but it was a woman cave. So this is where they, they suspect that the, the women would escape from all the other activity. Let's see if we can't see the, the kitchen. Somewhere in here there's got to be a kitchen, I would think. This would be the bedroom. Look at this. You know, maybe they let me stay here tonight. I could rest on that. A little doll. Right now there's a gentleman's wife, Mark's wife, probably up in Michigan somewhere saying, oh honey, I love these walk and talks, the way that Tom just pays attention to the detail. But I don't see the kitchen. This must be the dining room. All right, so lest I, I find the kitchen, then we'll uh, continue. I'm gonna actually take my drone up and do a little flight around the property to wrap up this uh, to wrap up this video. I'll find my way back out to the front. And I don't think that there is a uh, unless I'm mistaken. That old chair there, wheelchair. Isn't that something? Look at that old wheelchair. Look like it got some use. Okay. And I didn't see I didn't see a kitchen in here. Here's the brick the brick nogging. Okay, so unless I miss the kitchen. Let's, uh, let's do a nice flight. Well, I thought I might get a drone shot, but unfortunately my battery on my controller is at 20% and I'm not gonna risk it. But this is your, uh, this is your tour, so I hope you Hope you enjoyed the short break as much as I did. And uh, for that, for the record, the, the first room that I entered was the, the actual kitchen, which is now the gift shop. All right, have a great day.